As you see it, open with me in your Bible, if you would, to the book of Proverbs. I want to go in a new direction uh, uh, for the next couple of weeks. This new series before the main message is called Faithful to Sow, Faithful to Save. So today I want to talk about sowing money and saving money. I want to talk about sowing money and saving money. In Proverbs chapter 28, verse 20, it says that a faithful man will abound with blessings. Anybody excited about the blessing of the Lord? A faithful man will abound with blessings, but he who hastens to be rich will not go unpunished. In the NIV, it says that a faithful person will be richly blessed, but one eager to get rich will not go unpunished. Ever since the end of last year, around October, November, we started, uh, we injected teaching during Sunday morning service on the subject of prosperity. The reason why we take the time to teach each week is to teach on the subject of prosperity to stir you up, to stir up your faith that it's God's will for you to prosper financially. That's why we go over these scriptures. Uh, God wants you to prosper. God wants you to be rich. Amen. And it's important for you to believe that and to stir up your faith about that. On Wednesday night, I shared a brand new series called Blessed Storehouses. Uh, I'm very excited about this new series. We talk a lot about sowing but I don't know if I've ever done a series of teaching about saving. And just as it is the laws of God for you to sow, it's also the will of God for you to have savings. Amen. And again, what we believe is affected by what we hear. So today I believe that I'm being led by the Holy Spirit to go in this direction on Sunday mornings about being faithful to sow, but also being faithful to save. And the Bible is very clear that a faithful man will be rich. A faithful man or woman will, be, will abound with blessing. So let's talk today about sowing money and saving money. How many of you that are here today or online would like to save more money? By a show of hands. If you're here and you would like to save more money, then this message is especially for you. So our goal in this message and over the next few weeks is to show you from the word of God that if you want to increase your savings, then be faithful in your sowing. All of us, by indication, want to save more, but what I want to show you is that if, if you be faithful in your sowing, you will be faithful in your savings. And this is powerful uh, as I see it in Scripture. Being faithful to sow, you will be faithful to save. Again, Proverbs 28 and verse 20 says that a faithful person will be richly blessed. But one eager to, to get rich will go unpunished. This essentially says that a faithful person is going to be rich. I believe that. But what qualifies a person for being biblically faithful is very interesting. In other words, how many of you all would want to be rich? You know, essentially that what I can imagine would be all of us. If not, what's wrong with you? Amen. I just would, you know, like to have enough and then that'd be fine, you know. The Bible says that money is the root of all evil. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that the love of money actually is evil not to have money. 
I didn't get a, I didn't get a good head. That, that, that's evil. <laughs> you can't pay your bill, can't do, you know, what you need to do. And so I believe with all my heart that a faithful person is going to get rich. But what, what biblically qualifies me for being faithful? Uh, if we remember from the book of Luke chapter 16, verse 10 and 11, Jesus outlined for us the picture of faithfulness. He said in verse 10, he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. He who is unjust in least is unjust also in much. He says, therefore, if you have not been faithful where money is concerned, who will commit to your trust true riches? In the NIV, verse 11 clearly indicates that he's talking about being faithful where money is concerned. Verse 11 says, so if you have not been trustworthy or faithful in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? Now, money has run through the hands of us all. In our lifetime, we have literally, depending upon how old we are, have handled hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars. Yet if we look at our present state and our status in life, it may not reflect that we have handled so much money in our lifetime. But what the scripture says is if we're not faithful in handling money, then who would give to us uh, true riches? So in order to be considered biblically faithful, Verse 10 tells us that we have to be faithful in what is least. Remember we asked the question, which is least, the seed or the harvest? If I had a watermelon and I set it up here and I had a watermelon seed, obviously just the physical size, which is least, the seed of a watermelon or a watermelon itself. You will say, well, the seed is is the lesser part, the watermelon or the plant that may have multiple watermelons. And then within those watermelons may be, you know, hundreds of seeds that could be hundreds of plants that could be thousands of watermelons. But which is least, the seed or the harvest? Well, obviously, the answer was the seed. That's the smaller part. Amen. And the harvest is the bigger part. What I challenge you today to receive is that if you are faithful to sow, you will be, according to the scripture, faithful to save. Because which is least, sowing or saving, and sowing is the lesser part. In Luke chapter 12, let's look at this story. Verse 20, uh, 16 through 21. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my goods? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater barns. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be of which you had provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. How many have already can see this is a powerful passage of scripture about saving money? I mean, if you read this too fast, you would think that, it, that you're not supposed to store up money for years into the future. That somehow God is against people that have so much money laid aside for retirement. So much money laid aside for their children for inheritance. So much money laid aside for college funds or for vacation that it, it, if you read this too fast, you would think that it's against God's will for you to save money because of how it turned out for this guy. 
But if you slow down and read it carefully and take into context the entire scope of Scripture, what I believe you'll see is exciting. And we're going to be looking at it over the next several weeks. Notice here this guy, he was a person who sowed seed into the ground, gave it time and waited for the harvest. He was an individual who believed in the law of sowing and reaping. He didn't get his wealth by stealing. Come on, by taking it. No, he got it by planting a seed, giving it time, and he got a great harvest. His ground brought forth plentifully. Is God interested in multiplying your seed in a great harvest? Oh, absolutely. And sure enough, he said to himself, you know, man, I've got such a great harvest. My barns aren't big enough to be able to store it all. So he got an idea. I know what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns the place where I put it to store, and I'll build greater barns. You know, your bank account can fill up. It can fill up at 250000 That means the federal government, if something crashes, if something goes foul with that bank system, the government insures you in your account up to $250,000. Once you reach that, you need to open up another barn. You need to open up another bank at another institution, another organization. Why? So that that, that can be protected. So, but this guy, his barns got full, so he tore them down and he built up greater. But listen, so again, over time, receive in your heart that it is God's will for you to have money stored up for years. Listen to what that guy said. He says, I've got enough for years in, I've got m- money laid up for many years. Do you know that that's exactly what people in this world are working for? It's why they go to school to get an education. It's why they, y'all, got, y'all making me preach this way too hard, and we know it to be true. It's why we work. What are we trying to do? What are we trying? Why do we go to work? Not just something so we can have something to eat. Our ultimate goal, and if we were to do a poll and go around and ask every person present, if, uh, if, you, if you hit it big, now, I don't believe in playing the lottery, so I'm just going to leave that alone. But if you hit it big and somehow or another came into a large sum of money, would you quit your job and retire, get a nice place, and, and eat, drink, and just be happy for the rest of your life. So many people, not only in here, online, and in throughout the world, they would do exactly what this guy. We got money laid up for the rest of our That's what our individual retirement account is for. That's what the Roth IRA, that's what our pension, that's what Social Security. It's to give us that ability to have money laid up for years so that we could eat, drink, and be happy. But it's the last verse in this scripture that's most important. The individuals who save money for themselves but are not rich toward God are in danger of things not turning out the way that they intend for them to turn out. When you talk about being rich towards God, that's mean, that means literally using money for God or for God's stuff or for God's buildings or facilities or vehicles. Being rich towards God means using money for giving God money to do his business, which is the furtherance of the gospel. So I challenge you today, church, without question, God wants you to be in a place where you have treasure, money laid up that could last you for many years. This is exactly what the world seeks after. This is why people go to college. But the problem is not having money. It's having money and not being rich toward God with the money. How can you be rich toward God with money? By sowing into the kingdom. By giving money to God. My challenge to you today is be faithful to sow and you'll be faithful to save. 
I, I almost can't wait till next week to preach the other part of this. I just wanted to kind of whet your appetite and lay the foundation. God wants you to save. But a faithful person is the one that's going to abound. What qualifies us to being faithful is, is faithful in the little thing. See, if you're not faithful to sow, you won't be faithful to save. Just look at the history of your lifetime. But as you become faithful where your sowing is concerned, where that little part, you'll be faithful where your saving is concerned. Hallelujah. You all received that today? Amen. Glory to God.